Michelle De La Rosa, physical therapist for Connect Physical Therapy. Our demonstration today is to show you three different breathing techniques. The first two techniques are what we often see when patients start their physical therapy program. The third technique is something they're often training people in as they go through their physical therapy journey. I wanna preface by saying that there's no specific right or wrong way to breathe for each person. It's more your capacity or flexibility to change as you go through different postures or positions or activities. So depending on your breathing pattern, it can be helpful or harmful in the condition that you're working through. Marjana Bard, physical therapy assistant, is going to demonstrate the breathing techniques with us. Let's begin. I'm here with Marjana Bard, physical therapist assistant, who's lying down facing up and showing us what we call upper chest breathing. Upper chest breathing can be useful for people that have tightness in those upper chest muscles, shoulders and neck, and to expand their breathing into that range. You can see the rise and fall of the upper chest wall as her hands are placed there. For people that have a history of anxiety or stress or smoking, sometimes that population can be stuck into that upper chest breathing pattern. So if they've also got back or pelvic pain, it might be more harmful than helpful to breathe that way. The second pattern is called abdominal breathing or belly breathing. And you can see the belly rise and fall with her hand placement. Again, it can be helpful for people with coordination issues or for people that need expansion into that range if they've got limitations in their chest wall. But anyone that's got an abdominal diastasis or pelvic prolapse, any kind of pressure management issues, it may not be helpful to breathe with belly breathing. And now we've got rib cage breathing. Rib cage breathing is like moving an accordion. When you breathe in, the accordion opens, and as you exhale, comes together. Much like a circle, as you breathe in, the circle gets bigger. As you exhale, the circle gets smaller. This mimics pelvic function. The pelvic muscles open and lengthen during inhalation and they come together during exhalation. So rib cage breathing really mimics pelvic muscles as closely as they can. And here's another view of rib cage breathing without the hand placement. A more functional pattern for rib cage breathing is in sitting. Most of the time we're upright during the day. It's more challenging, but very useful to learn ribcage breathing in a sitting position. So her hand placement is showing inhalation is opening and exhale is coming together. Opening and coming together. Inhalation opening and coming together. We hope you've enjoyed this breathing practice today.